Hello, friends. We are back with the last episode of the season for Maske Un Podcast. We are actually just within about an hour away from kickoff before the Sevilla match, so we're not going to even be discussing that. We don't care. Not, <laughs> not on the agenda today. All right. We're indifferent. We're going to be discussing a little year-end wrap-up. We're going to talk about defender, midfielder, forward of the year, most improved player, most underrated player. We're going to give out player of the season. We're going to get into a little keep, loan, sell, or we're going to tease you with it and save it for a little uh, midweek clip or, clip or maybe even next week's episode because we are going to take a break. All right. We're going to get into a lot today. That's on the regular agenda. Of course, we're getting into Chavi out, flick in, all that good stuff. But we're going to be taking a break after this. We're going to be doing one episode in June, July, and then August. And then we'll be back for the regular season. So let us know how much you're going to miss us. Scale 1 to 10. Get those comments rolling in in the chat. We're going to get things going with Buga and Pablo here. But before we get into any of what I just said we're going to get into, Pablo, you are fresh off the bus from that Barcelona Femini Champions League win. Tell us about it, my man. What was the experience like? Yeah, great, great. I think obviously everyone's gone like crazy over the the Champions League final win this weekend for Barca family, their fourth title of the season. And for me, like with Barca one, it was my first sort of trip with a team and doing stuff away. So really, really cool experience. Amazing atmosphere, by the way. Like I know obviously everyone's raving on it on social media. It was insane. That like the fan meeting point before the game, it was crazy. At San Mamés, fifty thousand fans there sold out. I'd say about forty four, forty five thousand Barca fans. Leon had a little pocket in the corner, um, or behind the goal, rather. The atmosphere was incredible. Aitan and Alexia on the score sheet. And then, obviously, to be able to speak to the winners after and Hidal Def and him to bow out with four titles. Yeah, a really cool trip. Great experience, like, for me, Percy, to, to do it. And for Femini, I mean, they're a top team. And also, like, great professionals. And they're lovely as well, by the way, like. Because I think maybe some footballers have the stigma. I don't know, maybe some men's, team, men, some men's teams do. But they're really lovely, mm. really approachable. Um and really, really like willing to do the interviews and happy and so yeah, great group and uh, another great accolade for them. Yeah, absolutely. Buga, any thoughts, good man? Honestly, I want to start representing Barca Femini more because it's giving me more praise. I mean, like it's what three champions league in four years, two on the double. Are they gonna do the triple? Like maybe we should all just jump ship and go there, you know. Maybe they should invert yeah, everything. Start supporting Femini for the trophies. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe we change the entire dynamic. So they play every game in the Camp Nou now. Maybe we put them in the Champions League, have them play El Clásico against Vini Jr. and Mbappé. You know, may, maybe we just change completely. I think maybe that's the best strategy Laporta can do. So, yeah, that's that's my take. Coming in hot. I love it. Well, we, we do have a lot to discuss. I'm sure we'll... Uh, talk about some more Barcelona Femini in the future. Again, congratulations on the Champions League win. Uh, but we've got a big agenda here today to get to. And like I said, before we get into this season wrap up and some awards here, <sighs> Chavi out, Hansi Flick in. It's official. What, what's your initial reaction? Puga, I'm going right back to you. I don't know if you remember, but a few weeks ago I said I was Flick in, right? It was me convincing you to take Flick, and it was him, the little British person, <laughs> that he wanted, <laughs> that he wanted was, to have Thomas What you just Tuchel. saw there was Buga searching for a, a uh, radio-friendly thing to call Pablo <laughs> on air. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Literally, on, I, I, was, I was scanning my like vocabulary list of 10 words. <laughs> He's like, what's not going to get me canceled on this podcast? Oh, okay. I'll call so, him yeah. British. <laughs> call him British. So, yeah, like, I, I think I, I, I'm i actually all in for Flick to, to join Barcelona. I, of course, do not endorse the whole way that we've come to this decision. I think that's horrible. It's atrocious. It's just disgusting. It doesn't make me want to feel any more proud for this team. It's, like, done completely opposite. It's like, oh my God, am I representing this club this an absolute mess. Like it looks terrible. It really, really does look terrible. Uh, that's on the one on one side, right? We, I think we can get into that discussion as well. But in the terms of getting Hansi flicking through the door, let's imagine that we Xavi went through the big door open. He he went. I don't know. We didn't. He 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 went. Okay, his tenure is gone. We don't matter. We don't care how it ended. But now we have Hansi Flick. I think sure. I'm I'm all for it. I think he's a manager that can actually particularly improve Barcelona in those things that happen backstage behind closed doors. That's the sort of preparation that I think 
a team of this magnitude needs, particularly when it comes to getting back to the competitive level to have that consistency week in and week out. Hopefully we can see that with this team because this team is very volatile. It's like one week we are the best team in the world. The next week we are probably, uh, you know, auditioning for for playing in, in second division. So that's the sort of things that that I think Hansi Flick can improve on, on that um, consistency. And I also do look at this squad and I feel that there are some players that can adapt to him. Particularly for me, I'm most excited about Alejandro Valde. I think he can really improve under someone like Hansi Flick. He's very good physically. He can adopt that style of what Alfonso Davis did at Bayern Munich in that treble winning season. So I think there's plenty to be happy about for Hansi Flick. And I'm sure we're going to do plenty of more analysis when it comes to it uh, before the season starts. But yeah, welcome the German guy and and yeah, let's go. Oof. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I, I'm shocked at the timing of it all, <clears throat> mm. and uh, and I'm very curious to see if or how this divides the fan base, because Chavi was definitely uh, the supporters were behind him. You know, you heard some chants for Chavi in Laporta out in their last match, so. I'm just kind of curious how Laporta is going to be able to spin this and get some support again now that he is the man who has gotten rid of not only Lionel Messi, but now Xavi Hernandez as well. I mean, he's just get, getting rid of one Barcelona legend after the next. So I'm, I'm really curious what the reaction will be towards him. But if we look at Hansi Flick in a vacuum, I, w- I will give some credit to Buga. He made some very good points. What was that? Two weeks ago, or one week ago? I don't even remember. I think. I, remember I, think, the points. I, I think it might have been one week here because I I wasn't there for these points on the flick program. Okay. No, no, we did Maybe one we'll, when we'll May, it was a few few weeks ago. It was when we did a little discussion of like it was first time when Xavi left. When when yeah. Xavi announced uh-huh. that okay, I was going to leave. It was then. And John- I know it was just Buga and I though for sure. I remember that. Um, I know he's known for. A high press, attacking football, um, quick build up. Which, when we get to keep lone cell, that's I'm I've I've got one on the list that is <laughs> directly related to that change. Um, I don't know. I'm very curious. I, I'm I I am a little bit upset because it feels like there's a lack of loyalty at the club right now. Um, and it stings a little bit, but that just might be the cost of doing business and the cost of getting us out of this hole that we're in, you know? So uh, I got mixed feelings about it. I'm going to kind of wait and see what happens. I know, uh, like Buga said, we'll be talking about this more as, as the summer progresses, but initial reactions, I I'm, I'm unsure if, if I'm going to be optimistic, I'll, I'll, I'll wrap it up here. And then Pablo, I want to get your thoughts. <clears throat> if I'm going to be optimistic about Hansi Flick coming in, it is a change, right? If we kept Chavi, nothing really is going to change in the transfer market. We got the same manager going in the same players. What's going to be different next season. I, right. I don't know with this, at least it, it's something different. It's not going to be the same team going into next season. Good, bad, or ugly. We'll see what it is. Um, I'm going to be trying, I'm going to try to be optimistic about it, but it's going to be a different team. Pablo, how are you feeling? Yeah, no, obviously, obviously the timing um, has shocked like a lot of people um, with maybe the way it was done. Obviously, Chavi asked to leave, asked to stay, eventually stays, and then a few weeks later is sacked. Obviously, surprised people, yeah, maybe shocked people. I I agree with your point, John, in the fact that maybe this was a decision that Porta needed to take anyway. You know, maybe when Chavi said, I want to leave, Porta just said, fine instead of saying, please stay, because maybe the performance this season hasn't been good enough. I personally probably think, yeah, it hasn't been. So I think like, objectively, away from the way it was dealt with, I don't think the decision is a bad one at all. And this is almost like a little, I don't know if it's an exclusive, I think it's one of the video of it, but we were with um, La Porta last night, actually, with the family, and he, he gave a little speech to the uh, to the crowd. He was very animated, saying, um, "Every de- being the president's not easy, but every decision we take is is for the good of this team. And I do believe that, I do believe that, you know, that La Porta does want, you know, this uh, this team to do as well as possible. And I know, obviously, he's had his eye on Flick for a long time. I personally like Hansi Flick. I think it's 
a risk for Barca. I think Barca are very specific in terms of what coach works for them. Sometimes if you come in and play 4-2-3 on football, fast, dynamic, um, evade the midfield, that goes well over our heads and just doesn't work at the Camp Nou. But we'll see if it does this time around. And I get your point, John. You know, if we kept Xavi, sure, we could have done great next season. But hey, maybe it would have been the same as this one. There's no reason why it wouldn't be. Real Madrid are only getting stronger. We clearly have dropped off quite a big cliff from last season to this one. Um, and I think even Xavi himself has probably struggled to play the Barca way, actually. I think Xavi's best mm-hmm. playing pra- pragmatic football. I think that's probably a fact we're not able like, to hear as Barca fans because he's Xavi Hernandez. He's like the pinnacle of beautiful football when he was a player. But really, I think Barca were best when they were a solid defensive side and they won games 1-0 under Xavi. That's, mm-hmm. well, that's how they won the league. And I think him trying to then go with like two full-backs, uh, three attackers... I think it's hurt him big time, actually, in, in, in terms of holding out results. So, yeah, you know, maybe, uh, look, the way I see it is I back Flick. He's won things before. I'm excited to see how he, do, how he does. I really am. I am excited to see how Flick does. Weird, bizarre situation probably for the fans to take in, but let's hope it's the uh, the right decision and, the, um, and that Flick does well because I do think he's a very good manager and I think after this season, it's a fair decision. Mm-hmm. I, I, I do I do agree with what Pablo says. Like you can see at Laporta, I think that he is like a fan in that position. And that's one mm-hmm. thing that, that won't ever change. Like he of course wants a better man for, for this club. And whatever happens, you have to back him in saying like it's a bold decision. It's a bold decision in the sense that it's a manager that's not gonna play the Barcelona way. It's a manager that has different approaches to the game. Like Pablo said, he's gonna bypass completely the midfield. Like it's gonna be, it's it's gonna be a, a very big change for your Pedris, for your for your Gavis, for your for even for that CDM that we were looking for. You might not even need that sort of player yeah. in this formation as well. Like it's it's he's just gonna jump completely from the defense to the attack. He's gonna have the main wingers doing most of the job. You're gonna have that number ten who's gonna be crucial, and very very important. So. I'm excited to see what happens. I do like that sort of evolution. And Laporta is basically with this decision, putting all the, the arrows, all the cameras, all the microphones pointed directly at him. Because, and that's something that I feel it's very bold. You know, it's, it's something that you have to be admiring, admiring admi- as, as an admirer of because it's not easy to take that decision into account, right? He's basically going to be the make or break of Barcelona and he's putting that all on his shoulders. And I... You just have to kind of have to respect that, right? And I just wanted to mention that actually, when you look at the way that the Barcelona way of football is played, it's been quite a while. I think that ever since Pep Guardiola, we have never been able to replicate that. You even take a look at Luis Enrique, and the midfield wasn't as hugely important. Like it was Busquets recovering the ball, it was Rakitic filling the spaces for the wingers, but it was going the play through Jordi Alba, Dani Alves, and it was just simply leave the ball to Messi, Suarez, and Neymar and see what they can do. And yeah. it's it's a much very different team. Like the only team that have been able to replicate that control possessions, Manchester City of Pep Guardiola now, and you have that Pep Guardiola team back in in oh nine, oh ten, and and oh ten, <laughs> and uh, and eleven, right? So, so I think that that's the sort of the last time we actually saw that. So I don't know why we're clinging on to this idea, and I just feel that this squad can quite kind of benefit with with Hansi Flick at the helm. So let's see how it goes. I'm I'm excited to see how how we do. It's going to be different. It's going to be different. And it's still very new. So I think we got to give it a little bit of time. Um, the transfer window is going to be opening up here in a couple of days. So our, our June podcast will be interesting. Um, everyone, again, will have to keep an eye out for that. Maybe we'll make some announcements over on Twitter to keep everybody up to date. We don't have that scheduled yet. I know uh, we're going to be taking a little summer break, some vacations, getting some sun, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, so that'll be coming up. But uh, what do you think? We ready to move on to some year-end wrap-up, some some awards here. Some we should have thought of a name for our awards. You the roomies. I mean? The roomies. I guess we can keep it with that. I mean, for for our legacy listeners out there <laughs> coming yeah. over from the engine room, we uh, yeah, giving out some roomies here. Hey, uh, to be like suggestions. What? Yeah. yeah sugge- leave your suggestions down in the comments for this podcast. What what should our awards be called? Right for the engine room, we were calling them the roomies. Now we're Maski un podcast. What do you think? What should they be called? Let us know down in the comments. We'll uh, we'll give it a review and and we'll see what we pick. Uh, with that said, folks, 
defender of the year, midfielder of the year, forward of the year. And then maybe we, we save player of the season until after we also talk about most improved and most underrated player. I Let's agree. start with defender of the year. Either of you want to go first? Either of you itching for it? For me, it's very clear. pulls out his scrolls. Ooh, clear. Ooh. Yeah, for me, it's clear. For me, there's one defender that I think has maintained his level throughout the entirety of the season. And that guy is Jules Kunde. He's going to be my nominee oh. for this award. Oh. Yep. I, too, had Jules Kunde. Uh, I really think he's stepped up a, a, an extra level from last year. I think he embraced that right back role. There's a mentality of if uh, you can't get out of it, get into it. Right. And I think that's what Jules Kunde yep. did, whether it was intentional or not. He said, you know what? I'm not going to complain. I'm not going to, you know, ask to keep being put back in the center back position. I'm going to embrace what I'm being asked to do, which is play right back. And he really has been uh, one of the consistent spots for Barcelona, like you said, Buga. So I, I too have Jules Kunde as defender of the year. It was between Paul Kouarsi for me and Kunde. But I'm also going to go Kunde. I wanted to go Kunde, but I, I thought I, I, I thought I thought I was going to get shot down, eh? Because because <laughs> he divides a lot of opinion in the fan base. Kunde actually, some people think he's been really poor a lot of games, and some people think he's been way off it for a few months. I think everyone struggled for consistently big time this season, bar the last few games. I think Jao kind of said I would have been a big shout for that as well. Can I just say I think the opinion yep. on him has shifted uh, mid April onwards completely. Almost after when he gave away the penalty against PSG, it's been a hood. From after everyone thinking he was like an incredible, I still think he's a top player. But I'm gonna go with Kunde. Although Kubasi is tempting, but the fact that he only played his first game in what January has swayed me. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for that, me that's, that's massive. For me. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Yeah. yeah consistency but, throughout the year. Yeah, and, and you just gotta shout out Kunde like working after hours, you know, having those those extra I think he has really embraced like like what John has said is he has embraced that position, has embraced, okay, here I'm at Barcelona, I'm gonna go full out. Like even little stuff, you know, like like I see like him on social media, like going to different places and, and tourist spots, you know, just enjoying his life there. Like that's what I want of a player. Like he reminds me of Trostein in a way that you can see that Trostein has embraced the entire thing of Barcelona. And I can see him hopefully staying for quite a while in Barcelona. So I I, I yeah, I, I do like that. I appreciate that. Yeah, let me let me give uh, another shout out and I wasn't going to do this, but uh, I got to, you know, zoom out over the whole season. Had it not been for the, the two matches against PSG and the second out Classico, Jao Cancelo probably would have been my defender of the year. Yeah, me too. Mostly for I, what he did on the attacking side, right? But he, mm -hmm. he again, outside of those three matches, <laughs> had an outstanding year. I agree. Um, I agree. So yeah, I, yeah. I, I want to give him a, a shout out as well. He has taken, he has, he, put us in the round of 16, I think, with that just he drove the entire game for against Porto. It's actually mm -hmm. been the last, like, since then, it's been quite a while that I've seen a fullback, you know, just have that presence in a game where it's like, okay, he was clear that he was the main threat and he was playing fullback. You know, it was his game, his match, not since Dani Alves, since Marcelo, players like that. I've seen that sort of influence in a game for a fullback. So I'm just going like, yeah, it's quite insane. But those three matches... They really do stink. So, <laughs> so unfortunately, <laughs> so unfortunately, he loses to Kunde in my list. Yeah, I'm with you on that one. All right, midfielder. Ooh, Pablo, you want to start this one? This is a this is a really difficult one. I think there's an obvious choice that people are going to go for. Yeah, and I'm not going for it. Look at you. Look at you, you bold man. Right. You hipster. Are you, are you, how you dare call me football? Hipster. <laughs> <laughs> Pablo is dead. <laughs> that was quite the backhand. <laughs> oh, that's class. That is class. Okay, know, what's the take? We all know who Borga would have been picking if a certain Ivorian was still in the team. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. 
Well, I'm going to say no. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to go for Ida Kai Gordon again because I'm going to go for Fermin Lopez. Mm, because I think yeah. he's been absolute. I think he's been absolutely class. If we're looking at every time Fermin put on the pitch, which has probably been more than I thought, actually, he's been ridiculous. He's into double figures for goals from midfield, and I think he's just he's just been class. And it, like like I said, if he'd only played a, a little amount, obviously I wouldn't have given it to him. But I think he's played more than enough to be like a candidate for the player of the year, not like the Corbett C situation. He's got enough minutes, enough starts, enough games for this club, big ones too. So I'm gonna go for Fermin. Yeah, I I have Ilka Gundogan here because uh, I think that ultimately he's just a, a class player. He has he really has shown that that extra bit of level or class that we were missing in the midfield. But I kid you not, like Fermin Lopez is up there. He he's gonna win the most awards for me in the roomies. So I kid Ooh, you not, like and wow. the only the only reason that that for instance I want to watch the Sevilla game now, the last game of the of the season is literally because I just want to watch Fermi Lopez. That's literally it. Um, the Fermin is, show. Is he starting? Yeah, he's playing left wing, false winger, that sort of. Uh, but I also include Gungan here because he's a free signing. He's still that, that sort of player that I feel he has taken completely to this club and he understands what we need. He's not afraid of those declarations in post-match uh, conferences. I feel that I don't know. He has. He can just be a, a breath of fresh air for this club. The quality that we were missing in, in a player like him, it shows. So I'm going to give him the, the midfielder award. John is the yeah. tiebreaker. Uh -huh. uh, those were my top two as well, but I did give it to Ilkay Gundogan simply because when you look at midfielders, he's t first in goals, he's first in assists. Uh, that, that really does it for me. And he was the consistent one throughout the year when no Gavi, Pedri coming in and out, Frankie coming in and out. Uh, Fermin really didn't come into fruition until the back end of the season. So for me, got to go Gundo again because of the consistency, which I know I go in Kunde, go in Gundo. It's a little bit uh, right down the middle. But for forward, I do have a little bit of a surprise, perhaps. Hmm. Oh, this hipsters. <laughs> Podcast full of hipsters. <laughs> Who would have thought? So for forward, uh, MVP for the, for the forward position. I'm going to make a shout for Rafinha. Again, I, I'm going with the consistency factor. Rafinha able to do it from any position, even has to be pulled into the midfield at times to play an interior position. Uh, his willingness to do whatever it takes for the club, willing to do whatever is asked of him, and, uh, and his ability to figure it out from any of those positions and find a way to have an impact, find a way to produce for the club. Even though Lewandowski has more stats, when you look at goals and assists, Rafinha, uh, uh, I mean combined, uh, Rafinha is top of the club with assists, nine for the season. So consistency is key here. I'm going Rafinha. You, Paolo? I'm going Rafinha too. Shit, I thought I was going to be with Damn. you. Damn! You're with, yeah, sorry, you're with one of Rafinha's biggest fans here, unfortunately. You know how much I rave about him, eh, the good and the bad. I just think he's class, yeah, he gives Barca everything, produces goals and assists, drives them forward in games, is often the outlet for everything. I think Lamine is the obvious choice for a lot of people because of how much he's burst onto the scene, and it, he's often been the wild factor in games as well, talking about digging Barca out of situations. He's certainly done, done a lot of that too, but... I'm going to go for Rafinha. For me, he's one of those. He'd be untouchable in the summer because he's that good. I'm going to go for him. Just everything. Mm -hmm. Go on. Go? Hipster. I was actually going to go for Vito Roque. <laughs> I was waiting for the shark. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I'm going to give it to Lamin Jamal. I think that, that for, for me, Ooh. he just... You know that for me, it takes quite a while to just simply recognize, you know, when, I, when a young player comes through the scene. I've said that it starts at the start of the year, like I want to see that consistency, that player can actually pull through quite an entirety of the season. I think that Lamin Jamal has just done it. It actually, uh, there was, the Ansu Fati and Lamin Jamal played together in a game this year. Like that's how, how since the start of the season, he was actually important to this team. I forgot stuff like that. And, and I started rewatching a little bit more of Lamin and I feel that he's just, his class. He's really, really his class. Uh, and I have to give him the forward of the year for for that. I think he deserves some sort of recognition there. So I'm going to give it to him. Oh, all right. Yeah. I dig it. That does it for 
Defender Midfield Forward of the Year. Again, let us know in the comments who you got and why. And now let's move on to Most Improved Player. Hugo, we are back to you, sir. Who you got? So in Most Improved Player, uh, it was very difficult for me because I think that all the players sort of underperformed. <laughs> like mm -hmm. they were better last season than what they were this season. Yeah. So I'm actually going to give it to... This, this is where I give it to Fermi Lopez, where... I had one expectation of Fermin Lopez at the start of the year. And I was okay, this is okay, okay, this is this is the player, okay, just uh, another another, you know, forward attacking minded midfielder coming through La Masia. And now at the end of the, the year, I'm like, this is what Coutinho was meant to be. <laughs> you know, like this is a, a completely different player. And I think that he has improved or or, or showed the quality that he that he has. And and I and I just have to give it to Fermin for that because like Paula said, double figures, goals. Uh, from midfield in this year, uh, I feel that every game he 100% goals in the Champions League to get Barcelona through to the quarterfinals, goal in El Clásico. Uh, yeah, Fermín López has it all. I, I really am excited to see where this kid can go. And, and yeah, so he's my most improved player because at the start of the year, I was not expecting to have Fermín here. Hmm. Okay, that's a good shout. I was a little bit more strict with uh, my qualifications. So because Fermin was on loan last year, I actually did not count him, right? Uh, full, Fair. full credit to your arguments there. Here's Fair. what I went with it, though. I went Ferran Torres because under the radar, he almost doubled his goal scoring tally for the year. He mm -hmm. went from four to seven, still same number of assists, only two. I, I would like to see some improvement there. But it, in terms of his goal scoring accuracy this year, I don't remember having to rant at all about Ferran Torres putting it far right and high, uh, high wide and hardly handsome, which was pretty much the theme of mm -hmm. last season uh, and, uh, and the half season he joined before that. So low key under the radar, I think Ferran Torres actually uh, had Quite an improvement this season. So no, I, for most improved I was going to put Ferran Torres as well. He's my second option. But I was like, there's no way that these guys are going to go with it. And now I feel like oh, <laughs> I should have put Ferran Torres in. Because I want him to win this award. I'm shocked he didn't. Yep, yeah, yeah. Didn't. No, but but let's be honest. I feel that mainly the reason why he has not been perhaps most imp more important than what he has been this season is probably because the fact that he hasn't played enough because of injury. Yep. But then also because simply... He, he has, I don't know, he has, hasn't featured, you know, like like in yep. games. He hasn't come as a substitute all the, all the time. But whenever he has been available, he has been quite a... He's, for me, like the 12th player on the on the team sheet. Like when you want to bring a forward in, you need to go, I'm going to bring Ferran Torres in. And yeah. if now I'm Hansi Flick, I'm looking at that sort of Thomas Muller role, that second striker, and I'm like, he could be the guy. So I, I feel that he has improved quite a, quite a bit as a player. He has improved quite a bit. So if we're going directly with that criteria, I do agree with John. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, who you got? You make a good point because I did have Fermin as sort of, I thought, like the obvious pick for most improved player. But you make a good point in terms of, you know, none of us watched him at Leonardo Deportivo last season. So we can't really say most improved. I mean, he sort of burst into the scene. I suppose Hector Fox got, falls under similar sort of like category in that regard too and then that got me thinking as you were saying about Ferran and I started thinking right in the first team last season who he watched who do I think has been better this season hey what's it called when, when, <laughs> when the balls of hay just roll past the desert you know <laughs> literally I don't know if I've ever heard that one before you know like the little from like, on the films yeah 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 ah uh, yeah 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 and I thought, right. Tumbleweed, God. that's what it's called. The tumbleweeds, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do, do you know what I mean? I've, yeah. I, I, start, I start thinking defenders, nope. Goalkeeper, nope. Midfielders, nope. Nope. Attackers, maybe Rafinha's equaled. And Ferran, to be fair. Maybe Ferran is the only better. one that I can go like, oh, he's been better he's, than this year. Has he been better? Yeah, but I don't. Kunde, maybe, right? We were saying earlier. Yeah, yeah. I think shout, shout for Kunde, but. I, I think Ferran nudges him out for me. Yeah, even though... So I feel like I'm being harsh, but I, I, I can't give the, give the award to Ferran because for me, he still hasn't done enough. And it feels like after that, it feels like I've forgotten about Ferran after the Betis hat trick. When was that? January? Mm -hmm. Yeah. He really did taper off with, with Vitor Roque coming in. 
uh, that was quite the distraction. Uh, but then Jao Felix started playing well. Rafinha started playing on the left-hand side. Lamine Yamal secured the right-hand side. No one else was touching that. So it just kind of happened naturally. He just kind of tapered off. Do you know what yeah. I mean? I've seen Ferran since the, since the hat-trick at the Biamari, which is bizarre, really. But So, look, I'm going to stick with my answer, Fermin. I understand that it maybe defies the logic of it. But um, I suppose if you had to say first-team players, who's actually improved? Yeah, Koundé or Ferran. Yeah. So we actually have two votes for Fermin, one vote for Ferran, but you know I'm going to go with Ferran, so yeah, Ferran has won it, apparently. So, so. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Love the it. Shark. All right. Um, we got that then. Okay, so then before we get to player of the season, most underrated player. Pablo, you get to go first for this one. It's probably between two for me. Andreas Christensen's one of them. I still think he's criminally underrated. I think we would have had a much better season if he was starting centre back every game. And I think because he's not uh, like him from as Araujo level wise. Obviously, Araujo is always at the first centre back on the team sheet for me. Christensen is top. Doesn't ever really put a foot wrong. And then Rafinha as well, just because I think if you're doing giving that much output and being like for us potentially one of the top three players of the season. And you're getting that much abuse on Twitter. That screams, mm-hmm. that screams underrated, surely, you know, because, like, wow, I mean, that guy gets hammered. Um, and if we're here saying how good he's been, so I'm going to go for Rafinha, or maybe for the purpose of this one award to give it to one name, I'm going to go Andreas Christensen. I too have Andreas Christensen. Ooh, I thought it was, yeah. I thought it was left field. Yeah. <laughs> No, this is this has been interesting actually. Yeah. So uh no, I'm giving it to Christensen for for the same reasons. I, I think that uh he is underrated in terms of his reliability and his passing ability. I think he and Kubarsi really are cut from the same cloth. I, I think it's it's a toss up for the two of them which gets that left center back position. Um so I'll I'll be kind of curious to see how Hansi Flick manages that situation. You know, Araujo, Christensen, yeah. Ubarsi, Garcia could be coming back. Who knows? We'll, we'll, we'll discuss that uh, here when we get to keep loan sell. But yeah, I also got Christensen. Okay. Hugo, what about you? I, I had two Christensen, but also Rafinha. But when it comes to actually underrated, I think that people... By saying that Christensen is underrated, and I think that in the whole like scope of football, he's quite underrated. Like we will talk about Matisse De Ligt and stuff like that. For me, like I wanted De Ligt always at Barcelona, but now I have Christensen. I'm like I don't need De Ligt in my team. Like he's literally that player, and I and I feel that that he's equally as better, or no, he's equally as good. So Rafinha, I'm gonna go with Rafinha because I think he's truly underrated. When you look at the this the stats that this guy puts out, when you look at the way that he plays every single game, he single-handedly won us the game in Paris. Like, not single-handedly, but, you know, he was clearly the star man in that game. Um, yeah. And I feel that he can take pride in in, in playing that good and, and being quite a player for, for Barcelona. And I feel that in Spain, maybe we underrate him. But when you do look, for instance, at certain people from the Premier League and stuff like that, they all praise him. They all talk about him like, yeah, he's clearly Barcelona's one of the best players. So I'm going to go with Rafinha because I feel that people just do not understand how good this guy can actually be when it comes to crucial moments and giving 100%. Well said. Well said. All right, that leaves us with one more, fellas. Player of the season... I think it's on me to kick this one off. Yeah. I'm going with Amin Yamal. Mm. I know he didn't get any of my awards. <laughs> to this. I know. I know. I know. But hear me out. Here's why, folks. I would have given him forward over the year, but Rafinha was more consistent and, and he gets credit for being adaptable, going to the left hand side, all those things, right? But this season would have been so depressing without Lamin Yamal. It would have been so hard to continue to watch Barcelona this season without Lamine Yamal. There were times before he really stepped into that right wing position 
it, it was a struggle. It was boring Barcelona. It was it was just for 90 minutes. So La Mina Mall for me was a, a spark, was a little ray of light, was uh, the light at the end of the tunnel sometimes and and really made Barcelona enjoyable to watch again. And I think some of the other players caught that. And so for me, La Mina Mall saving i'll say the the enjoyment for me gets player of the season you paulo it is a good argument it is a good argument i do agree with that that period before i mean came into the team was actually really dull and very depressing it's a good point but i'm i struggle if i've given rafinha forward of the season then i've got to give him player of the season too so i'm going to go with rafinha which feels weird to say, actually, because it's funny, if you look last season, like, on the starting 11, the normal, like, Gala 11, he was probably, like, rare. It's, like, maybe, like, 10th, 9th or 10th, 11th in, like, the ranking of, like, how much everyone loved everyone. And for him to go and win pair of the season next season maybe says more about how poor we've been this year than how good Rafinha's been. But, look, he's stepped up in, in big moments. I think he's put in the top level in every game he's played, contributed massively, so... I'm going to go with him, but I think what this exercise made me realise is definitely the drop-off from last year to this year, 100% from every player, and the lack of good, consistent performers too. Like, when you're asking for midfielder, defender, attacker, I'm thinking... And even that moment there where we were trying to do most improved player, I was like, damn. So, yeah, it's been a weird season, which is, goes back to the top of the episode, the change in coach is fair. I'm going to go for Rafinha. Wow. I've also gone for Lamin Jamal. I feel that Lamin Jamal. <laughs> you know what? Remember? No, yeah. no, you, you, know, you know what you guys have done? Do you, have you seen when um when FIFA do their like FIFA Pro Team of the Year and they've got Alisson in goal? They got Alisson. They, they've got Alisson in goal in the eleven, and then they go goalkeeper of the year like Gianluigi Buffon. Yeah. Was, why isn't he in the eleven then? No, no, but my forward was Lamin Jamal, so I'm okay. Oh, for right. me, I, I, yeah, I used a Fair different play. criteria. No, no, but, but for Buga's, me, Lamin... Buga was consistent at least, but... Yeah, for me, oh, the main sorry, thing is that, you know, about. I always have the eye test when it comes to stuff like this. So for me, Lamin That's Jamal it. has clearly been the most, like, uh, like John has said, the most entertaining player to watch this season. I also think that when you remember when I when I told you guys when you think of Barcelona, what player comes to mind? You think of City, which player comes to mind? Forward and Haaland. You think of Manchester United, you might think Rashford, stuff like that. I think of of Barcelona now. It's like before it was Gavi. I think of it. I think it's Jamal. I think like everybody knows Jamal now. So for me, that's that's a, a quite a massive indictment of how good this kid has been. And, it's just like like John has said. If you take Laman Lam, Lamin Jamal out of the equation, this season has been awful. Like there's no green light to take out of of this this season. There's nothing good to to go onto the onto the next year. Lamin Jamal has to be for me the guy, the player of the season. He really is a fantastic player, and also like uh, you you see, he's already going to be a starter and an disputed starter in the Spanish national team for the Euros. That's massive as well, and that's due to his season with Barcelona. So stuff like that for me is just massive. And I think Lamin Jamal, you're going places. But we say the same thing about Ansu Fati a few years ago. So please, no injuries. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. Um, are either of you surprised that none of us gave any of the awards to? Robert Lewandowski, despite having 18 goals, which is the most for the club, and tied second with assists. Rafinha had nine, Lewandowski and Gundogan both had eight. Why Why are we overlooking Lewandowski? Why are we not showing Lewandowski any love? I mean, probably the, obviously the classic Barca thing of it's a lot more than just like the score or the goals. It's like how you play as well. And I don't think he's probably been good enough in a lot of that. Missed a lot of chances too. <sighs> Played so many games. 18 goals isn't enough either, really, I wouldn't say. For a player of Robert Lewandowski's calibre. And I mean, look, it's not just been him. You know, Borgo, you've been saying that all season, to be fair. You've been defending him and saying it's not just like, it's not, it's not a him problem. And I, 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 I get that. But I think when you watch Lewandowski play, he hasn't been someone that like fills you with joy and you think like, 
it's not been that at all. It's been like, okay, he's scored like a, a goal for us. Like, nice, good. Like, let's have some more. It's never been like, what a performance with Lewandowski. Yeah. And, and he started a, quite a bit late to, to get into rhythm. Like, he started, you know, firing ever since that PSG game. And then, like, he just fell down. He, he continued the form, you know, but before that, he wasn't really there. For me, like, that game against PSG, I, I still do think that Lewandowski is useful because he's the real only pure number nine and still the athlete that we have yeah. in this team. Like, you see the way that we play against PSG, we couldn't have won that game in Paris if it wasn't for Robert Lewandowski. Like, that's, yeah. that's literally yeah. how it goes. So I do feel there's a role for him in the squad. We just have to see how we manage that role and if it's going to be week in and week out. Um, so that's probably why, because I feel his role in the team has changed quite a bit. Um, but let's be honest, like he's still a good player. Last year, every award went to him, in my opinion, if I had to do this this list again. So he's, he's, he's not that... He's sort of, you know, he's a... What do you call it? He's victim of his own success. Let's just put it like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good way of putting it, actually. Victim of his own success. Yeah. I think that explains it quite well. All right, so once again, everybody, let us know down in the comments, your defender, your midfielder, your forward of the year, most improved player, most underrated player, player of the season. Let us know down there. Now, folks, we're going to let's just decide live. We're five minutes away from kickoff. Are we OK missing a little bit or do we want to pause? What do, what do we want to do here? Because we, we have not gotten to keep loan cell. Mm. I think we should do it later when Hansi Flick is announced and stuff like that. And we know like he's going to be the manager, what he's going to do. Maybe he's going to talk a little bit press conference, stuff like that. We can start getting better ideas of like maybe what direction he's pointing to. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Why are John, you John, <laughs> <laughs> uh, It's fine. How long, how long have we been going? I'm leaving all this in, by the way. We've, I'm not we've, editing we've any of that. For uh, 45, 45 minutes. Uh, all right. The people are going to riot, but to perhaps be, we do. To, to be fair, a few weeks' time. Yeah. Doesn't have to be long. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, we're not going to do it next week because Uncle John's on vacation. I'm going to Costa Rica, baby. Wow. And we'll 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 come back in with a June episode. We're going to do Keep Loan Sell. And we can do we'll we'll make that the 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 whole shebang of the episode because yes. we can do what we would do and what we think Hansi Flick is going to do. Yeah, absolutely. And we can just make that the whole episode. All right, so everybody, just blame Booga if you're upset that we didn't do it for this episode. All right, this was his plan all along. He was plotting this from the start. Okay, he didn't want to do it today. He wants to make a list, so it's going to be great. I know it, but you can blame Booga in the comments. And let us know your match awards. Let us know what we're gonna call the match awards. Look at him. Not match Stop awards, that. the season awards. I'm thinking My I'm goodness. thinking about the views. I'm thinking about the views. Like we already do the most improved player stuff like that this this episode. So we need another marketable Buga title the, for next weekend. Booga the the uh, the Joan Laporta of our podcast, making the hard decisions that's yeah. best for <laughs> the pod. Literally. <laughs> I'm gonna sack Paolo and bring like Another, another <laughs> German He's podcaster. Sack the club legend. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna sub the club legend, and I'm gonna bring a German, <laughs> a German replacement. Get out of here. We won't have it. It'll be the three amigos till the end, which isn't anytime soon. But we are gonna take a little break, like we said. It'll be a couple weeks until we get another pod out. It'll be uh, probably probably early June, mid June, something like that. Yeah. We're gonna talk. We're gonna discuss. We're gonna schedule. Uh, we'll announce something over on Twitter here soon. So uh, sorry about the tease, but we appreciate you listening till the end. Hopefully, it was some good content for your listening ears. And we'll be back soon, folks, with more Maske Un podcast. We'll see ya. Bye.